Uh, hi, uh, th I'm Dr. Oyun Kaur. I'm a consultant interventional cardiologist at Arun Tagore Hospital. And uh, we have today with us uh, Dr. Devdatta Bhattacharya, who is our clinical director, as well as senior consultant in interventional cardiology. And we also have uh, Dr. Lalit Kapoor, who is also a senior consultant in uh, cardiothoracic surgery, as well as a transplant surgeon. Um, so he, we are here today to discuss uh, heart failure and the modern therapies of management of heart failure. At the, on this uh, juncture, I will ask Dr. Bhattacharya to, to talk us through the evolution of heart failure probably last two decades and how it has changed and what are the new therapies we are looking at. Thank you, Ayan. I think, uh, as you know, uh, for the last 20 years, numerous new drugs have come and uh, the treatment of heart failure, uh, the outlook of patients with heart failure uh, has changed uh, over a period of time and uh, that is because uh, the newer drugs are much more uh, potent and uh, they are able to keep these patients well for a very long time. Unlike earlier when uh, these patients had a very dismal prognosis and their five-year survival uh, was that bad, uh, as bad as a uh, malignant uh, cancer. So, uh, we have uh, seen uh, this evolution uh, in the treatment. Uh, numerous new drugs uh, have come one after another. Uh, we, uh, from the decades of the 90s, we saw that beta blockers uh, were useful in heart failure. Then we, uh, what we have seen over the last, uh, not over the last two decades, but over the last three and a half decades is that first there was uh, the development of ACE inhibitors uh, in heart failure uh, that was a big uh, revolution in the treatment of heart failure. Then beta blockers which were earlier thought to be uh, not helpful in heart failure was found to be actually helpful in heart failure. Uh, this was followed by mineral corticoid antagonists uh, and that was another important drug. And finally, uh, we had uh, angiotensin receptor blockers and uh, ARNI, uh, which is a combination of angiotensin receptor blocker and necrolysin inhibitors. And uh, so we have an armamentarium of drugs, uh, and uh, lately also we have SGLT2 2 inhibitors, uh, which are helpful in the treatment of heart failure. So compared to 30 years ago, heart patients with heart failure live longer. But uh, there comes a time when uh, the treatment of uh, the, the drug treatment of these patients, uh, they do not work anymore. And uh, that is the uh, point I think uh, that you want to talk about. Yes, sir. So, uh, so I, I think that is where we were going to uh, move to our next speaker. So correctly said that, you know, we have a lot of drugs which makes treating heart failure much, much more uh, easier probably and better and lot of patients are doing much better with therapy which was not available maybe a decade back but then there is a certain subgroup of patients who despite the best available therapy still are in gross heart failure and need something more than just medicines uh, so in the process as you understand so a lot of patients who do not respond to the standard uh, uh, therapies with medicines we will have to uh, evaluate certain surgical options and typically that involves a cardiac transplant uh, so to uh, give us a few uh, an idea broad idea about what is cardiac transplant we have dr lalit kapoor here with us and he is our consultant cardiothoracic surgeon and transplant surgeon sir over to you uh, so if you could give us a broad overview about cardiac transplant yeah well um, heart failure as dr ayan said patients managed medically for many many years finally the heart becomes so weak that it cannot pump enough to sustain the body at that point we need to offer something else and transplant has been traditionally the, the way to go. It's been around since 1967, not new, 50 years down the line, we're still doing transplants. And um, in fact, the sixth heart transplant in the world was done in India by Dr. P.K. Sen. And, um, but since then, there was lots of ups and downs, there were not enough immunosuppression and the drugs were not good enough to maintain the heart which is taken artificially. Now, for all the people who don't know, how do you get a heart? The heart which comes to a patient who needs a heart has to come from someone else. Unlike kidneys, there is only one heart in a patient and the only way to get a heart is somebody donating it. Which means it would be somebody who is probably dying from either an accident or a st severe stroke and the family consents to give the heart. 
or organs multi organ donation it's called so one of those hearts which is available like this by a kind donation of somebody wanting to see his loved one continue to live in others that kind of a gesture makes that heart available and we are able to give that heart to a patient who is needy who needs it whose heart is not functioning and we can use that heart to substitute with this one so that's how it goes and because of the difficulties in getting hearts transplant has been limited all over the world and we have around 5000 operations a year all over the world and in india we hit a good figure and slowly increasing to around 200 a year nowadays a little bit more than 200 the journey has been tough and now patients in india are, are getting this facility after the establishment of a transplant organization at the national level and the state level of course as i said all this while it's difficult to get organs and we feel to get hearts so so i think just to give a perspective as dr kapoor has been saying so we've been started on our cardiac transplant journey almost since the year 2014 and within the group we've done almost close to eight uh, cardiac transplants and which tells you that the transplant landscape has been evolving and cardiac uh, donations or rather organ donations have been better than before but of course it is much lesser than what we actually needed to be so on that note it is important to take the take home message here would be that we need more people to come up with organ donations and that is of course a benevolent gesture that has to come from the uh, people at large uh, so dr kapoor at this point of time so let's say those patients who do not get a heart let's say are still in the hospital and are very sick what are the general options available to those kind of patients yeah what happens suppose a patient is very sick and sliding medically on medical treatment we have to offer him something to keep him alive till a heart is available that's one thing sometimes offer him some treatment or mechanical tr- treatment which will recover from that for a temporary period this is called mechanical circulatory support it could come in the form of small short acting devices which could last for a few weeks or a few months and that would be like an intraaortic balloon pump maybe for a few weeks or you could if you want to extend it you can have other devices which are called left ventricular and right ventricular assist devices they are actually machines which run on certain pumps and uh, the latest generations it started many years back with pulsatile pumps they would work with pulsation but now we have pumps which run on motors electrical motors and the patient can actually carry the motor around you know mobile is mobile with these motors so they could be on these pumps for months and uh, wait for a heart when it comes so essentially we are talking about uh, hearts which are artificial hearts which run on motors which can actually be transported from place to place so on that note sir recently you've had an experience or rather as an organization we've had our first biventricular centrimag replacement to give you an idea it is having two artificial hearts to two different chambers of the heart so how is, was your experience with the first biventricular centrimag in eastern india at least yes yeah. in fact as a as a team we all shared an experience where we had a patient on a biventricular support for about 37 days now biventricular support means you are putting one pump to support one ventricle and another pump to support a second ventricle and the patient sort of lives with it these pumps are actually outside the body and only the tubes are going into the body the patient has to stay in the icu and actually is quite mobile we had the patient actually walking around the room and uh, he was actually doing his exercise and maintaining his physiotherapy so that we, when he did get the heart he would be fit to manage the situation so that is exactly so you must be wondering why did we put a patient on on an artificial heart in the first place so i think one of the reason was that we of course weren't getting a heart in the meantime in order to support him till we get a heart and of course as uh, sir correctly said that we were looking at improving his nutrition too yes so so <coughs> so the good part about this support was that it gave us a rare opportunity actually to ensure that we fed him we got his nutrition online and made sure that you know he tolerated the transplant surgery much better than expected he would have had it not been optimized so that is something that really made a huge difference to this patient who after 38 days on mechanical circulatory support which is he was on an artificial heart for 38 days that he did a huge i mean almost a comeback 
so i'll come back to dr bhattacharya sir so uh, what do you think is the uh, course of action for those patients let's say in in our country uh, we generally tend to have transplants uh, is uh, mostly for till the age of 60 to 65 uh, beyond 65 patients with heart failure who let's say are not eligible for a cardiac transplant or are or borderline donors or recipients as we call them so those patients what are the options for them i think uh, even 60 is a high figure for our country because we have a lot of patients who are much younger, younger and uh, in heart failure uh, we are looking out for patients who are young uh, whose uh, heart has uh, gone beyond the stage of medical therapy and uh, who have years to live in front of them we have to uh, remember that a uh, cardiac transplant lasts around 10 years so uh, if we can give a young patient a uh, life span of 10 years that is a huge thing uh, for the family and uh, we can have uh, retransplants we can have uh, left ventricular assist devices uh, they have, so the treatment of uh, heart failure has evolved and as you were asking if it was a slightly older patient who has other organ involvement uh, who is not a, such a good candidate Uh, for cardiac transplantation what are the options uh, for them and we have a device now uh, called the left ventricular assist device uh, which is very similar uh, to uh, the mechanical circulatory support that uh, dr kapoor was uh, discussing only that was outside the body uh, but this is uh, uh, the pump is inserted uh, through open heart surgery into the body and uh, it is carried like a a mobile uh, pump outside uh, by a m- and it, it it works by a motor and runs on batteries and uh, we have seen now that after the initial experience we have now more sophisticated <coughs> ventricular assist devices and these uh, devices last for a long time uh, years 3 uh, to 4 years uh, was the median uh, survival for these devices but now more and more experience with this, these devices are uh, gradually accumulating and uh, we call it now destination therapy absolutely in uh, so someone who has reached a stage in his life where he cannot uh, go on any further with medical treatment what is not a suitable person to receive a cardiac transplant these patients are suitable for this left ventricular assist devices and we have done left ventricular assist device in our hospital as yes, well so yes, maybe sir. you and dr kapoor can discuss that case yes sir so we we also are one of the only hospitals in calcutta to have actually implanted the uh, the heartmate 3 which is the best possible available left ventricular assist device uh, that is available in the country uh, just to give you some more uh, understanding that left ventricular assist devices like it is also a, applicable as a durable destination therapy it is also used as a bridge to trans plant so as dr kapoor was saying those patients who are really very sick and need some form of mechanical circulatory support they can be put on a left ventricular assist device given optimal time to actually recover improve nutrition and actually it gives us time to you know wait for the heart so once once a heart is available the um, uh, the machine is explanted and the heart is implanted in the heart of course what i tell you might sound very easy but it's actually quite difficult uh, <laughs> i think dr kapoor will say the same thing to you uh, Uh, so sir uh, what is your experience regarding the left ventricular assist device so as i believe there are two generations that yes, were yes, available yeah. and uh, so See, earlier we had the experience we put a left ventricular assist device there used to be two types the earlier types the older ones as i said historically were the pulsatile ones there used to be big devices in outside the body and then they came up with the intra intracorporeal you could put it into the body and they would be having axial pumps like the heart made too right now those were associated with a lot of thrombosis that a two year survival of around 60% 65% specifically stroke and yeah, stroke was a big problem and so uh, they were slowly evolved and the time has come and now we have the centri- the, 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 le- the the heart made three which is actually a centrifugal pump it's levitated by a magnet- magne- magnetic magnetic uh, levitation so therefore there's no bearing and no fixed points leading to less thrombosis and less problems with the brain and therefore the loss, survival of patients with this device is approximately 80 plus percent which is equivalent almost to a transplant 
so which is really very good for two years but we do not know what happens beyond two years so that may be awaiting at this moment <coughs> the therapy for uh, artificial devices that scope is still open True. lots of things will be coming but as of now it's transplant i think it's not be realistic recruited by yeah. costs uh, the artificial that is expensive very very expensive and so we still have to look at transplant where we need to work on people having to understand all of us all the public at large that donation is important you know somebody some poor man bichara he may have an accident for example you know in india we have the highest rate of accidents in the world per million population we also have like 1.5 million deaths 1.5 la uh, lakh deaths per year from road accidents right. it's surprising and of that you know uh, those are those are deaths those could be actually the young people on motorbike 50% are on two wheeler drives so those could be actually patients who would die, could be donating their organs at the moment they just going waste so called in a way i think that consensusity has to be developed so you are talking about patients who are uh, brain dead brain yeah. dead yes so people so just who are on a who are on a ventilator on a ventilator so of course they talk of accident numbers are 426 per day in india and 18 per hour are the accident deaths so i mean i'm not saying all of them are mental data and all of them are waiting for transplant but some of them could be and as the families and the people are sensitive to it our donation rates could increase from what is now as of today they are only 0.67 per million population per whereas in spain for instance it's 30 per million population in america it's 24 per million population donation so i think as indians we need to be sensitized that this is a possible thing a way to reach out and help each other true true so so we do intend to have safer roads and i'm sure i hope uh, given government initiatives that should not happen yes accidents do need to come down that's definitely there but at the same time i think i would request dr bhattacharya also to give us a <coughs> uh, brief idea as to how how do you think can we increase more donations so so where are we lacking and why are we lacking do you think sir i think uh, we have to sensitize uh, our doctors and we have to sensitize Uh, our uh, patients uh, and the patients relatives and the general uh, the public in general about uh, the how a transplant uh, works uh, where uh, we get the organs from and it is uh, the concept of brain death uh, that is has to be explained to the uh, general public and these are patients who will never wake up and uh, these patients uh, will be if uh, they are not uh, taken off the ventilator they will stay on the ventilator for months sometimes even years and it is not human to keep them alive like this and uh, that is why the question of organ donation comes in and if these uh, patients relatives are counseled properly uh, sensitively and uh, if the doctors Uh, who are looking after these uh, patients uh, they uh, can uh, take a lead in explaining to the patients and their relatives and uh, in coordination with our uh, transplant coordinators uh, and the regional transplant organization then we will have uh, more people who are sensitized to it and in general people are generous uh, they do not uh, mind donating the hearts or kidneys they of their know. loved ones they if uh, they realize that uh, their patient has no hope and uh, this is a wonderful way of uh, living inside someone else's body and uh, uh, to really change the life of someone else uh, while you are dying uh, that is uh, a sim simply a great thing to do but it it depends really on awareness and there are people uh, who have uh, donated who have uh, who have noted in their will that they want to donate their organs and we have our the history of uh, our uh, ex chief minister jyoti basu uh, who donated his body for uh, the sake of uh, medical uh, advancement of uh, medical knowledge so similarly if patients uh, they can make such wills then uh, people are more sensitized and uh, a lot of more organs will be available 
for transplantation. So I think we need to get beyond the social stigma of organ donation and as, as, as correctly said by both Dr. Kapoor and Dr. Bhattacharya, it is an absolutely noble cause that you are going to do for. And uh, so given the fact that this is, it is going to be the festive spirit and it is the spirit of giving and uh, so I think the takeaway uh, would be that you know organ donation is the way forward. And yes, it is something that needs to be sensitized and this, this message needs to spread across to everybody because uh, it, it is probably one of the only ways you can have an afterlife or you can live in somebody else uh, maybe for many, many years to come beyond uh, your own uh, lifespan. Uh, so on that note, sir, anything else that uh, you would think is pertinent as far as uh, heart failure or organ donation is concerned? Do you think we would want to take away anything yeah, to would, the government? I, would, I, 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 would I mean, like any to government say, policies like say, that yeah, you would I would like to say something very important, which everybody should know. Um, Donation of organs is not. There is a there is a kind of a perception that there may be some undercurrent of uh, uh, wheeler wheeler dealership going on in this, but it's not true because all donated organs actually become property of the government, so called the roto or the soto, and they are distributed equitably in everybody depending on the need. So the lists are made. It's all a very transparent and a clean process. So when the do donation goes. It gets to the organization and the organization distributes these equitably. In a very unbiased way. In a very manner. unbiased way. So right. it's not as though it's some underhand dealing. That everybody should carry home that message. Right. So we understand it's a very complex process and it is done through very transparent uh, bodies of the uh, government and uh, various levels are there. And uh, But of course, I think at the end of the day, the uh, overreaching message that should go out to everybody is that we are looking at heart failure, which was not treatable before, has got better as far as treatment is concerned. For those people who did not have hope as far as heart failure was concerned before, we have hope now. Now, the intention, of course, is one thing that I would uh, underline or emphasize, I think, which all uh, the both the other physicians would emphasize too, is that in most such cases, it is important to come a little early. I mean, picking up these patients a little early, getting them on board early, ensuring that they are on therapy early, given that they are nutritionally better off, generally m means better outcomes. Yes. We often have patients coming to us at the very late stages where, you know, we really have not too many options open. At that point of time, there is very little things we could do. So, so the intention here is again that we want people to understand that uh, heart failure is best treated up front and it is it, when it is treated early generally the outcomes are much better yep the message for the day should be for heart day should be look after your heart come early don't reach that point right absolutely sir on this on this note we would like to end this discussion and uh, hope uh, and wish all our viewers a very happy pujas and uh, i hope you are all safe and uh, and have a great time during pujas thank you thank you thank you thank, thank you so much, much.